Hey, you're Tim Spratt Phillips. Look what we got here. We've got another really cool product from High Boy. And our youngest son is gonna try it out for you today to show you if your kids might enjoy it. And this is just a bounce bike. It's got an adjustable seat. It's got a hand lever brake and it's got a throttle here. You do have to push it to start using the throttle. So keep in mind, there is a high low setting here. It can be depressed or it cannot be depressed. 36 PSI max on the tires. There are pneumatic tires. And then it's got a drum brake right here. And just like the DK1, which is the dirt bike. So it's a very simple setup. Assembly is easy. Stay tuned. You can watch us unbox it for now. You ready to go? Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and show us how it works, bud. So as you can see, he pushes off and then he goes. And then he's literally using it. Are you at full throttle? Okay. Show us the brakes at some point. Okay, now let go of the throttle and then brake and show us how you stop. So how much practice did you have so far? Um, Four loops? Okay. That's how much practice it takes with these little balance bikes. If you're not used to it, now we wanna show you one other thing too, is if your kids are riding this, the charging port is right here. And so you'll wanna make sure that you actually pay attention to close that because you're probably gonna get water sprayed into it if you don't close it. So also our son has been riding a balance bike for how long? About three years. Three years. So he's quite good with balance bike and he rides the real bikes. And then of course the dirt bike, the electric dirt bike, which is the DK one if you wanna see that. We'll link to the playlist at the end for ride on bikes. But go ahead and stand up buddy and show him how it looks next to you. So how tall is he? He's about 40. Eight inches tall. And what's his inseam? Oh, I think about 18. Now this chair goes up and down quite a bit. Okay, I'll take it. This chair goes up and down quite a bit and it's very fast adjusting. So you can go very low. You can also take this totally out, but you would have to have another proper shaft size if you wanted to use a different chair. But just keep in mind, since the pedals are quite small, they aren't really pedals, they're just a support. So go ahead and ride again. Let's do some off-road this time, buddy. So go around in a loop and then shoot out onto the grass. Just push off first. There you go, now turn. Okay, now do some off-roading in the front yard, not where the construction is. So now you can see off-road is gonna be pretty rough because they are pneumatic tires but you're not gonna get the support that you would have because the suspension will really help with that. And it's only a nine mile an hour speed. So because it's only nine miles an hour, you're not gonna have a ton of power. Now press the button and see if it helps it or makes it worse. Does it make it faster or slower? Did It made it slower? Try it on the pavement. Faster? Okay. Do the faster speed for us, bud. In the grass. Okay, now turn. So as you can see, he's got really no problems doing it. He's probably on the bigger side, I would say, for something like this. His little sister is the one that's gonna ride this most of the time, and she is a very small. She's actually the older sister. The <laughs> older, I'm sorry. Yeah. The older sister that is littler. Yep. He's five and he's tall, but on the, on the tall side of average, I would say for a five-year-old. Right, and we did not charge this for the three to five hours we that we were not. supposed to. So probably what's gonna happen is we're gonna need to charge this thing and really get it powered up, good. But for now, you guys get the idea of the size and the capabilities, because I know a lot of the branding. Okay, go ahead and go onto the pavement again and let's do some more circles right here on the pavement, bud. Go up on the sidewalk and see if you can do that. And then why don't you show us just, just do uh, regular push biking, okay? So that people can see that you can do it. See, normal push biking or balance biking is going to allow the kids to get the exercise and the practice balancing. But as you can see, he's got long enough legs that it is probably not gonna be maybe perfect. But as you know, with balance bikes, if you know anything about balance bikes, they are sort of, universal so long as the kid can sit on the chair they can push off and they can do it why don't we go back toward the building and then we'll just stay so we don't have to keep spinning so basically this bike is sized in such a way that 
it's gonna fit a lot of different kids, but you still need to be mindful of the fact that your kid's inseam and leg length is gonna play a pretty big role in it. So the weight is not gonna be a big factor. Okay, you can come up here and stop and we'll look at the bike some more. You don't need to worry so much about the weight because the weight limits are pretty high, it's 25 kilos. 35. 35 kilos, excuse me, 78 70, pounds. Yeah, 78 pounds. And he's so about 42. Yeah, so it's gonna, the weight, you're gonna outgrow the bike in size before you'll tend to outgrow it in weight in most cases, we believe. Mm -hmm. So it's a great product. High Boy makes some cool stuff. They make adult bikes too, and then they make scooters and all these good things. But these are the things that really stuck out to us with High Boy. It's because we have two little kids and they're not quite big enough to need a full size bike yet. And so as your kids are growing, it's really cool if through the ranks, you can share something like this. And also it's a lot smaller and easier to store than something that's massive, like, you know, a big wheels sort of um, plastic blow mold injected uh, car or something like that. That's gonna, that's gonna sit and collect dust. And anybody that has them knows what I'm talking about. They're really fun for a little bit and then the battery doesn't work and then you're stuck with it. This thing's nice because it's gonna work. And then even when the battery's dead, you can still enjoy it for the balance bike. But at this point, I think we're gonna charge it a little longer and give the kids some time to enjoy it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, or if you think this would make sense for your family or your kids, then check out the link in the video description below. We'll have a master link to the High Boy store and you can check out whatever they've got to offer there on the website, including this BK1. And then we've also reviewed the DK1, which is the dirt bike looking one. And it's about double this size. It's a little bit more expensive, but just keep that in mind when you're sizing your children up against the options that are available. If you're getting one for your kids or if you're getting one for yourself, they have some adult sizes. We haven't reviewed them yet, but we would like to do that at some point in the future. For now, we just wanted to show you this really cool tool because when kids are happy, parents are happy, and especially when they're outside playing, and it's super fun. And um, our youngest son here is not really flying radio-controlled airplanes yet, but he's driving the radio-controlled cars, so he's getting there eventually. <laughs> but this is a really good thing to do on a windy day too, no less. So stay tuned. If you, wanna, if you wanna see us unbox and build this, the build is pretty simple. Uh, but we'll still show you in case it's helpful to you in some way. But definitely smash the like button, click the bell for notifications. If you haven't already subscribed, do that. You'll help support our channel in that way. If you want to support us in other ways, we have Patreon and PayPal available right at the top of the list in the video description below. But basically, the best way you can help support us is to buy the cool products that we review. And if it doesn't meet your needs, follow the master link and you can find something that does fit you. Because if you're not this size anymore, then obviously you're gonna want something a little bigger. So stay tuned guys, thanks for watching. YouTube, Brian Phillips, look what we've got for you today. Ooh, I can't quite lift it up. This thing is way heavy. And what do we have? It's from High Boy. And it says BK1, which means bike something one. <laughs> and you're like, that does not look big enough for you, Brian. You'd be correct. Because this is a balance bike and it's gonna be for hopefully our youngest daughter. If not, our youngest son will definitely enjoy it. And we're gonna help you guys see just how it unboxes in this video. Okay, this says three years plus. There are weight limits and things like that that you wanna respect and uh, it is electric, which is really cool. If you've never used a balance bike for your kids to learn to ride a big bike is definitely something to consider. Mm -hmm. All of our kids that currently ride bikes started on balance bikes, correct? Our oldest did not, and he had the hardest time had the hardest learning time. to By ride far. a pedal bike. Yep, and so let's just open up this, see what's in here. This is kind of what we do on Brian Phillips RC. We unbox, build, radio, set up airplanes, but then we don't have any radio setup involved on this type of thing. Comes with some tools, some Allen keys, and a double box end wrench, and then a couple of caps. Charger 25.2 volts at five amps. I don't really think that's what it really is supposed to mean, but let's look. Okay, so it's black. It's got a drum connector. It looks pretty simple, and then it's uh, 25.2 volts at 0.5 amps at 12.6 watts. That's a pretty good amount of power through a very small charger, so we'll see how that works. And as usual, we go through the process of opening the package so you can see how it's gonna get to you. 
It is a heavy package still. These e-bikes are always heavier than their um, non-powered counterparts. So that is everything in the box. This box is much more manageable in its size than any of the other bikes we've done in the past because this is the smallest item. Okay, cool. So we've got good high density foam, the kind that doesn't squish much, but it's gonna protect your package. And it looks like this has made a long journey, but it's in pretty good shape. Everything is zip tied together. So we're just gonna go over what types of tools you'll need as well. So we used a simple master force utility knife. Obviously I wanna flip this over just to make sure I appraise which side's better. And it looks like we probably had it better on the other side. I normally would wear gloves for this, but I kind of forgot. So I guess I'm gonna do it without gloves. We're just gonna open it right up. So side cutters are gonna be helpful, but if you don't have side cutters, you can use a knife. Just be super careful that you don't cut yourself or damage the finish. So while it's in the bag, in some level of protection, I cut these things. And that way I can hopefully keep from having things fling all over the place. Oh wow, so they're pneumatic tires. That's pretty cool. I didn't think they'd be pneumatic. Usually these tires are a foam filled simulated pneumatic tire and they're very rough and hard. Feels like plastic with bearing and bearing. So that's good. We've got a 90 degree filling point here. Inflate to 250 kilopascals or 36 PSI. That's pretty standard for a small tire. Feel how heavy that is. Not very heavy, mm -hmm. nothing crazy. Seems about right. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with what a balance bikes does, it is basically a bike that the child will straddle. And then as they're riding, they push with their feet on the ground, like Fred Flintstone style. And they're really effective at teaching balance. And many children that already have mastered riding bicycles actually find that riding these type of bikes is really fun still. So they'll do it if their frame is small enough. Uh, in fact, our bigger kids do also use our balance bikes. Okay, so just some protective foam, same kind of squishy foam, not the foams that they make the airplanes out of, of course. Okay, so same thing, this held the yoke here. So very strong, very sturdy. And then here we've got a little bit of a foot stand. Another pneumatic tire, of course, it's gonna be the same inflation level. It looks like a hub motor design. That means that the motor is inside there. These clips look to go on here when we're done installing the wheel. Okay, there is a manual also, so I'll kind of put that over by the camera crew and my wife. Okay, so we'll open up the tools. Give you guys a look at this. They're not marked, so I can't tell you what sizes they are, but I would imagine this is probably, oh, I don't know, like a couple millimeters. And then these two caps. Okay, so now that we know what we have for tools, I'm just kind of appraising the easiest way to untangle everything. Okay, so we'll untangle there. I'm gonna flip this over. Of course, we do this on our kitchen table or kitchen counter. And uh, it is made of metal, so it's quite, it's heavier than I expected it would be, which is good, nice and supportive. This feels like it's made of aluminum. Of course, you have to undo these to get the handlebars installed. Before we do that, I'm gonna clip this last zip tie here. Didn't notice that from the other side. Good quality, big, heavy duty zip ties to hold that in place. And then an adjustable seat. That's something that you'll generally see on these bikes. But the thing that you'll see on the high, high boy bikes is that it's actually a high quality seat. Look at this thing. Yeah, it doesn't it's fabric sure. covered, kind of like a pseudo. It might be real leather, I don't know. Is it real leather? No, nah, that's like oh, suede, so. fake leather. Yeah. And then there is adjustable seat here too, which is super nice. So that's, that's a lot of adjustment too, mm -hmm. goodness gracious. Okay, and then there's a foot pad on either side. Some warning labels here. We'll go over those when we get to that point. Okay, so you'll wanna be careful about your cables as you're doing this. Try not to move them at extreme angles and damage something, but you can just start the tape ripping it. It'll come right off. Okay, so we have got one of the, this I believe is just the brake. The brake is a drum style brake that wraps all the way around the outside of the axle slash drum that's attached to the motor. So as you can see, as I break, it definitely stops that. We haven't had any issues with the DK1, which is a dirt bike style that was made by High Boy as well. In fact, that's what got us introduced to this possibility. And our kids love that thing so much 
that we said we have to do this little pusher bike, balance bike. And also because our youngest daughter doesn't really have a current cool electric choice. And so this will give the whole family. Oh, cool. So it is literally on right now. <laughs> That's always kind of, or wait, is it? That, that sure looks on. It does. That's how the other one looks. Okay. Now I'm concerned because I don't want it to run, but just, uh, are you safe? Yep. Okay. Let's see what happens. What the heck? I can't tell if it's on or not. Sure seems like it's on. It sure does. Like it, it is like, oh, it's a hundred percent for sure yeah, powered. That's power. So let's peel off this protective cover. Maybe it's something weird going on here, but either way, I don't feel like it's starting. Oh, now, now there's no light. Okay. Careful. Yep. Nothing. That is so weird. That was weird. I don't understand what's going on. I feel like this is like the uh, Halloween special all of a sudden. <laughs> okay. So next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and get, let's get the handlebars and wheel installed. I can't imagine this being especially difficult, but let's pay a special attention to where the, the fill spout comes out that way. So we're going to put them on the same side. So I want that going away from me. Okay. And if you show them here, there's a bushing here and a bushing here. Okay. And then this is a threaded rod. I can't tell if it's a bolt. Yeah, it looks like it's a bolt. Yeah, just a big long bolt with a nylock. Okay, so this tool was not provided in the kit. And just to be clear, this was also not provided, but we're getting into where they are providing the tools. Okay, so this tool, does it even work? Well, kind of, yeah, I guess. Okay, so I want that nut to slip out. Okay, so now it's out. I'm gonna just show you how to assemble this real quick. So ordinarily, <clears throat> this bolt's gonna go through the yoke and then there'll be one of these. And in my case, I want it to go like this, push through the bearing on both sides. This is super easy. Camera crew could totally do this, no problem without help. And this is a nylon, so there's a little bit of nylon on the front and then there's just a regular knot on the back. And so you wanna make the nylon hit the threads on the outermost portion. Otherwise you have to work harder to get it started. Okay. It'll go either way, but then those are going to act as spacers to keep the wheel centered. Okay. So now we're going to assemble it properly. Now that we have identified the way that that's going to go together. Okay. So we'll just lay this stuff down in reverse order and put it together. So this goes through the yoke and then this slides on and then the wheel comes over slips through the first set of bushing or bearings and the bearings of course are giving me trouble because I'm catching the lip of it. There we go. And then we're going to slide through the second. I'm just going to kind of point that off to the side. And then once we've got that to where it's wanting to fall, I can go ahead and get that under control and then pass this through the other side of the yoke. It's a pretty easy process. Um, it's just a little bit awkward with regard to the way I've set everything. So I don't know if there's some magical solution, but I think I'm just gonna hang this over the counter edge. Mm -hmm. And then I, it's gotta be the biggest one, I would assume. The biggest of the Allen wrenches and the nut just slipped up there, which is not the end of the world, but I do wanna kind of have a plan for this, okay? So if you can catch that when it comes out, camera crew. Oh no, it went all the way, it went all the way down oh. here. Okay, so hold on. I'm going to reposition things just a little bit. So this is a little trickier than I thought because the handlebars are not mounted to anything. So I'm trying to be careful not to scratch up the finish. Okay. So you see what I did? Now it's down. Good job. Okay. So we just, I'm going to hang it all the way over the edge this time. And then I'm going to pass that up here. And then once I have that, and just get it, once you get it started, it's really pretty easy, I bet. Yep, pretty easy. Now some of these e-bikes, we've been able to do it a couple of different ways. I'm actually gonna sit in a chair because then I can get my body down low and put this right in there. See mm -hmm. how that fits? So it should make it really easy to tighten this. And I'm just gonna use the provided tools. Of course I have better tools, but I'm too lazy to go get them, A. And B, I want you guys to see how this works. I want to warn you that as I twist this, it's wanting to move everything. So if you have a second set of hands, it's not holding a camera. Have them use their hands to help you. OK. 
Okay. So what's happening is this is getting lifted up by the rounded edge. And so it does make it quite tricky to get that moving because it just wants to lift. So I'm going to pull up like this and see if I can do it. Nah, it just wants to resist. So I'm having to really hold down. Got it. Okay. I think I want to go more though, because you can see a gap down here. You see the threads that are exposed. Mm -hmm. I'd really like to pull that tighter because this doesn't even really need to spin. It can be totally tight and compress that yoke all the way down. Oh, while I was down here, I found the charging port. It's right here. Look at that. That was convenient. Hey, maybe we should charge it while we're literally sitting in front sitting of a charging here? port. Okay. So we'll plug that in and we'll plug in the drum connector and we'll let that do its thing. Pretty cool. By the way, that's a 2000 milliamp hour, 44.4 watt hour, 25.2 volts. At 0.05 is the charger required. And then I can't tell what the, it says up to nine miles an hour. Weight limit is 77.8 pounds or 35 kilos. So. Should be totally fine for our, yeah, for two our younger kids. kids. Yeah, yep. right. So if you have a bigger kid than that, they're going to generally size out before they weight out. Mm -hmm. Generally. I mean, that's not always the case. So we don't mean to be presumptuous here, but in our case, our youngest children are pretty small. So they should be no problem. And there's, there's an, a three-year age limit on this toy um, just because of the nature of whatever the rules are. The high boy, high, high boy is trying to follow. And they do have a CE rating and an FCC rating on this, which is unusual. Okay, cool. So that's tight. When you see ratings like that, that generally means that the company is following rules, which means they're spending money which means they're going to be around for a few weeks if you need to uh, ask them for help if something breaks. Okay, cool. So I am actually going to unplug this briefly. And then I'm just going to lift this. And the camp crew is going to put one hand on that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this around. And that's going to go... Do I have it upside down? I do, don't I? Does that look right? Yes. Okay, oh, that's the way it's supposed yep. to go. And I just need to make sure I didn't twist this. I can't, I don't think I did. There is a bolt, a through hole here for like a reflector or something. Mm. Okay, so, oh, and then we forgot to put in our caps. So we'll just pop those in real quick. They slip in. Of course, everything is harder when you're filming it, so don't be surprised if you get it done twice as fast as us. Plus, you will have had the benefit of watching us struggle through it, which is always fun. Okay, so you just slide that in and I hold that tight. And then it just kind of pops up there. Okay, so now we just need to undo these four screws which are not really super tight, but they're not super loose. So if you have a drill, you can use a drill with the appropriate hex drive to make this even faster. But my suggestion is to torque them down by hand to really make sure you get an even seat on all four. So get them finger tight first and then position the handlebars. If you need to make a little adjustment for your children, then you can make an adjustment by rotating forward or backward for a little bit of a height adjustment and or clearance on the knees. But remember, you don't have to pedal this bike, so there's not gonna be that clearance issue like you would have on some other bikes. You still have to clear your knees if you have tall, uh, a tall kid and they're put their feet down here and their knees come up like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're not pedaling the way that you would on some small bikes. Okay. So this comes out, a little bit of lubricant on the threads. I'm just gonna lay this on top of the Manual for a moment. Make sure you're not kinking everything. Take that hand off and hold right here. Okay. You can control both sides with one hand then, hopefully. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna lay this in and just try to do it so we don't drop all the screws. So I'm just gonna cut threads to start. This one's actually even easier than the last mm -hmm. two e-bikes. I don't know if we're getting better at it or they're just getting easier. This is probably one of the simplest ones we've done, but it's also the simplest one we've mm -hmm. done. 
it's noteworthy. Small. Yeah. Yeah. That it's simple. But that's kind of what you want in a balanced bike. If it's too complicated, um, it's just going to overwhelm the children that are uh, riding a balanced bike anyway. So you want to make sure that you consider that when you're looking into getting something like this for your kids. And to be honest with you, if you look at this kind of like up against a big wheels type ride on equipment, you're going to get a lot more use out of this. The storage is a lot better. Mm -hmm. You're going to, I guarantee your kids are going to use it more because what's going to happen is like with the big wheels and the stuff, they're fun and they do use them, but they're definitely huge. And if you don't have like practically an entire stall for a car or truck in your garage, that's opened. It's like, where do you put the thing? Mm -hmm. We've been struggling with that because we'd like to do something nice like that for our kids. But it's just like, where do you put the giant thing? We don't have room for an ATV for us, so they don't get an ATV, right? Right. Well, in this, if you have a kid that doesn't ride a bike yet, they're learning that skill yeah. of balancing. And eventually they're going to have a bike, you mm -hmm. would think. So I'm just, I was just doing a test and it didn't work. I was hoping I could hold that there and make it easier to get these last couple of turns. Um, and I think it's going to work. These, uh, these have been really good quality bicycles, though, I feel like, from High Boy. Mm -hmm. We've done a, a number of different bikes, and they've actually all been pretty good. Uh, in terms of quality, but I know that we've had, um, like we've pretty much done nothing to the little ones. Mm -mm. And the DK one is awesome. If you guys want to see a dirt bike, that's about hmm, one and a half times as big as this. It is so cool. And our son loves it. In fact, our son may be modeling this one here shortly for you because it's actually for his sister. He probably doesn't understand that yet and that's okay. But uh, his sister is, is the only one that really needs a balance bike still. So, mm -hmm. But he might be the one that does it because she wants him to teach her how to do it, yes. which is super cute. She's a little more. He's pretty fearless with stuff like this. And he's super good at this stuff. Yeah, she's she a little is, more timid. Yeah. The older girl is good with stuff like this. She does fine with it. But just our youngest daughter is the one that struggles with stuff like this. So we're, we're trying to give her some help. Oh, and the other thing, too, is if you have a child that is... Um, incapable of pedaling for whatever reason, whether it be a, like a physical handicap or um, maybe like a delay, this is a great way to get them involved um, with their brothers and sisters that might be a little bit more able-bodied um, because you can still get up and balance and it's also not super fast. It's gonna be kind of a slower, uh, safer thing. It's not like it's going to go 100 miles an hour. You don't have to worry about them catching on fire as they go, you know, because they're re-entering the atmosphere. So obviously, um, I leave the worrying to my better half, but uh, we've actually been very pleasantly surprised. You can let go now. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a brake here, holds onto the wheel, and then of course, you'll need to supply some air pressure to get these up to 36 if that's where you're going to run it. Well, 36 is the max, so you may not want to run these all the way up at 36 PSI, but it's a really cool frame. And then what we'll do is when we do the ride the maiden rider, the mating run. Okay, there's a power button here. Let's talk about that now. So when you press this button, that's supposed to turn on. And I think what's happening is that it's either dead or I must have disconnected, possibly disconnected something. It says kick off ground with your foot to glide for a short distance, then press the accelerator to start the bike, which is here. Okay, so I don't see any lights on, which is strange. And I'm um, just kind of curious about that because I did notice that we saw lights earlier. So I wonder if we've done something to cause that. Or if there's like a safety switch. I don't believe there is. We might take a quick sec and just look this thing over. All right, so we figured out what we were doing wrong. We took a second, we were cleaning up, and we are like, these lights wouldn't come on. And we thought it was like maybe broken or something. And so we were doing a little investigating, but you can see how there's lights on. Those lights start only after being pressed like this. They only work after you've started rolling. And then that's why it says on here, kick off ground with your foot to glide for a short distance, then press accelerator to start bike, which is this, okay? So right now, nothing happens, okay? See, it shut it off. Mm. So if you wanna help me, this is gonna be awkward, but we're gonna try our best. Oh wait, maybe I can do this. Yeah, okay. I can do that. So now watch, so simulating the kid pushing off the ground, 
See how it shows that little green thing? So that means that you're allowed to then start, I would assume. So then it runs. Or it runs fast. Or it runs slow. You wanna show them over here close so they can kind of see the difference in speed. So that's full bore. And that's full bore in speed. And that's full bore without the button pressed. Okay. So really it's not like a regular e-bike because you do have to push it and then that will guide you along a little bit as well. Now I don't know what type of torque we're gonna get out of that. It seems a little bit weak, so I, I don't know if it's correct, but I haven't seen it in action yet. So I have to assume that it's gonna need to charge for a while. And what did the manual say about charging? Three to five hours for a full charge. So three to five hours. So what we'll do is like a normal child, we'll hurry up and use it right away and then report how bad it works <laughs> when you don't charge it for three to five hours. But normally what you'd wanna do is, if this is a gift, it was such an easy build, you know, you almost just open it and charge it while it's maybe not built, if your kids like to put things together with you. Uh, because now that you know that it's right here, the charging port, you can go ahead and do that before they're ready. Now the other thing we have to do is we have to go ahead and get some uh, air in the tires. And so we're gonna do that right now and hopefully before the sun sets, we can get some riding clips. Uh, but we really do appreciate High Boy. They seem to be uh, they seem to be a pretty good brand to work with, and so we've been happy. These things have come really quick. What did mm -hmm. it take on this one? Like about four days? Yeah, three or four days. Yeah, I think we talked to them on a was it a Sunday or Saturday? I think we actually told them Monday the color we wanted, and then right. they shipped out almost that day or the next day. So four right. days. Yeah, so it's a really, it's a pretty quick mm -hmm. turnaround. And obviously the adjustable seat makes a big difference. It looks like a nice heavy duty seat, mm -hmm. which is good. And obviously, as you can see, you can lay it down. There's no kickstand required. Although I kind of tend to like kickstands on bikes myself because I feel like it's better inside the garage, unless they're a really crappy kickstand and then it's just in your way all the time. So kind of double-edged sword there, but I think this thing is going to nest nicely under and next to other bicycles. And so that should be really good. And then also for adjusting the seat, I wanted to talk about that for just a quick second. When you do adjust it, you pull that up and this slides out. And so of course you can take it almost all the way out. Yep, there we go. So there's the total seat and then feel how heavy that is. It's quite light. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then just give them an up close shot of that. It's really nice. It does seem like a nice Nice seat. material. It's yeah. got good firm cushion on it. It's not just like cheap, you know, fake foam that's gonna immediately be displaced. Yeah. And then of course, getting that in just back, it says, um, what does that say? What does that say? I can't read it. It's so hard to see. I think it says like the maximum. It says Cantor, Cantor maybe that's a brand. Install 22, I don't know. It's almost like, been a part number more than a. <clears throat> I, it, you know what, to me, it seems like it's probably saying it needs this maximum. That would be the maximum that you'd want to pull it out for use because you need to have a certain amount of purchase of materials up against each other. Now, I also wanted to point out the fact that there is no pivot adjustment on this. And so for some of you, that might be a bit of an issue, but keep in mind, it's a balanced bike. They're not going to be, you know, for like a huge range of sizes. They pretty much fit the bike or they don't. And so we're going to talk about our kids' sizes so that you can use that as a basis for consideration with your own children or grandchildren or a friend or whatever you're doing with this. So really cool. High Boy has come through now twice on really neat products and I think you should definitely check them out. We'll have a link in the video description below where you can buy one for your own children. Um, and then also, as you probably already know, if you know anything about Brian Phillips RC, when you buy these from the links, you'll help support us financially with commissions that come from these guys to us. But if it weren't already aware, we'll show the problems with the products if we see them. And if we don't see the problems, then we will show you all the good. So at this point, we've been super happy with this. It's been a pretty easy build. A little bit tricky getting this axle through, but not a big deal. It's nothing that's unsurmountable. And honestly, if you weren't filming it, I think it'd go twice as easy. Now, the other thing too, is that we got this extra crescent, or not crescent wrench, what am I saying? This extra hex key, and I think it goes right here because I was wondering where that would go. And that's actually to adjust 
the bite on your brake. Um, so if you want to change the angle of that. Mm, okay. Also, the other thing too that's really sometimes a little bit disappointing on some of these products is that you'll have an almost adult sized brake and that can be challenging if you have a small child. So just remember, one of the most important features is of course brakes, but this is a balance bike. It only goes nine miles an hour. Nine miles an hour to some people will think like that's a million miles an hour. It's not that fast. You can literally walk nine miles an hour if you're a very, very, very fast walker. Like very, very fast walker. <laughs> so you can put your feet down and stop if you have proper footwear on. So anyway, I think we're gonna be good. I think this is gonna be an awesome product and you've already seen it run. So you can judge it for what you think it is. And I'm super excited to see it out in the real world. So speaking of, we are gonna get ourselves set. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Smash the like button, help us out on the YouTube algorithm. And then subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Now this is one of our off topic items as with other ride on items. We don't do a lot of that on the channel, but we do wanna cover all the things that interest us that kind of relate to what we do, which of course is predominantly fixed wing radio controlled aircraft, helicopters, quads, and that sort of thing. But we also do remote controlled birds, weed whackers, leaf blowers, tractors, tillers. We do all sorts of things that pertain to our lifestyle. And so if that isn't your thing, then Sunday nights and Sunday afternoon episodes are probably not gonna be your favorite ones. And so we regretfully inform you that those are gonna be for the people that do like it. So our apologies in advance, but don't worry, we're not interrupting any RC content that will be right around the corner. Now, you could also argue, <laughs> since there are children, it is sort of radio controlled, because I can be like, turn left! <laughs> turn right so but it's not dsmx so our apologies hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and uh definitely check this out if you've got kids that you want to uh make really really happy stay tuned so much more from brian phillips rc coming